Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In recent memory, drones or unmanned aerial vehicles have been one of the most game-changing developments in military aviation. Their history dates back several decades. But this last decade has seen revolutionary advances in their capabilities. These unmanned aerial vehicles offer unprecedented flexibility on the battlefield. By allowing militaries of varying sizes to perform complex intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance operations. And even mount precise strikes from a safe distance. The Nat 750 was the first step in the U.S. military's drone evolution. It was primarily used for surveillance, but had limited capabilities. Newer models appeared, most notably the RQ-1 Predator. which could transmit live video. The MQ-9 Reaper, the most powerful successor, revolutionized the conduct of war by introducing high-precision strike capabilities. RQ-4 Global Hawk was a breakthrough in unmanned aerial vehicles because it improved upon the innovations of its predecessors. The RQ-4 revolutionized strategic surveillance by being able to stay in the air for 34 hours while cruising at an altitude of 60,000 feet. Real-time, high-detail surveillance over great distances, even in bad weather, is made possible by its sophisticated sensor suite's high-resolution synthetic aperture radar. And long-range electro-optical infrared imagery. By keeping a constant eye in the sky above the battlefield, the Global Hawk increases situational awareness no matter where it's deployed. The revolutionary effect it had on intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance operations, and the promise of unmanned aerial vehicles in today's battlefield were both made clear by its introduction. Significant improvements in sensing ability and payload capacity were achieved during the transition from the RQ-4A to the RQ-4B Global Hawk. Originally, the A model was built as a test aircraft. So when they built the A model back in 2001, when they shipped it out here, and they were like, okay, we're gonna start flying combat sorties, that was, that was, a first of its kind. They made minor or minor um, improvements to it as it's come along. But the B model, well, I mean, what we have sitting here was supposed to be the first production bird. Like this is what the Air Force was going to originally buy as it came out. As expected, technology advanced, and so did the UAV. Significant improvements in unmanned combat effectiveness have resulted in the transition from the MQ-1 Predator to the MQ-9 Reaper.
More weapons such as Hellfire missiles, GBU-12 Paveway 2, and GBU-38JDAM can be carried by the MQ-9. making it both faster and more capable than its predecessor. MQ-9s have longer loiter times, higher flight ceilings, and significantly faster transit speeds, thanks to their more powerful turboprop engine. Recent advances in sensor technology have allowed for more precise target acquisition and reconnaissance. This modification changes the MQ-9's primary role in the theater of operations from ISR to that of a hunter-killer. As an unmanned combat aerial vehicle, the MQ-9 Reaper must be assembled by its dedicated crew. This is done from a series of delivered kits once it arrives at its operational destination. Fitting the 66-foot wingspan onto the body of the aircraft, setting up the advanced turboprop engine, and aligning various elements that construct the drone structure is a complicated process. This hands-on process at the operational site ensures that each Reaper is well prepared for its specific mission parameters. as well as the unique challenges of its geographical area of operation. Operations for the MQ-9 Reaper often include combat strikes on targets specified by parallel intelligence gathering efforts. Once the mission type has been specified, its ordnance specialists are ordered to load it with the specified weapons. This UCAV has a versatile hardpoint configuration, which allows it to carry a variety of precision-guided munitions, weighing up to 3,850 pounds. Reaper uses a line-of-sight radio link, typically in the C-band spectrum, for takeoff and landing. allowing for close-range control during these critical phases of flight. A clear, open runway like that used by conventional aircraft is required for takeoff and landing. When the ground-based pilot arrives at the ground control station, he or she uses the LOS radio signal to control the aircraft speed, pitch, and other parameters. Guiding the MQ-9 through the complex process of takeoff or landing. Once in the air and out of LOS range, the drone is controlled by a satellite data link system. Specifically, the KU band, which allows command and control over long distances and during in-flight operations. Reaper can engage targets with agile responsiveness. by combining the MQ-9's close-range and long-range control capabilities. The Reaper launches its precision-guided munitions after receiving the command by a satellite data link.
ground forces have the potential to improve strike effectiveness significantly. They can illuminate targets for the Reaper's laser-guided munitions by using laser designators, ensuring the highest level of precision. This collaboration between the MQ-9 and ground forces combines the benefits of real-time aerial intelligence and situational awareness on the ground for maximum mission effectiveness across significant flight ranges. After moving on from a combat UAV like the MQ-9, we arrive at another marvel of drone innovation, the MQ-25 Stingray. As an unmanned carrier-based aerial refueling tanker, Boeing's Stingray is poised to revolutionize naval aviation. Based on the operational requirements of the United States Navy, the U-Class program shifted its focus from surveillance and strike roles to aerial refueling. The MQ-25 is designed to increase the operational flexibility of the carrier strike group's manned aircraft by leveraging autonomous flight capabilities. This is an essential step toward incorporating UAV technology into traditional military operations. The aircraft carrier USS George H.W. Bush served as the MQ-25 Stingray's temporary base of operations in the operational testing context. The conventional catapult-assisted takeoff and arrested recovery system used by manned aircraft was used for the Stingray's launch and recovery. The MQ-25 is connected to a steam catapult for takeoff, rapidly propelling the Stingray into the air. Once airborne from the aircraft carrier, the MQ-25 Stingray flies to a designated rendezvous point. Here, it meets the receiving aircraft, such as the F-A-18 Hornet. The Stingray extends a drogue, which is a funnel-shaped basket at the end of a long, flexible hose. The pilot of the F-A-18 maneuvers the aircraft to plug the probe into the drogue, thereby initiating the fuel transfer. This mid-air refueling dramatically increases the range and endurance of the F-A-18. Enhancing the carrier strike group's operational capability and placing fewer sailors in harm's way. Drones have transformed global military strategy. These unmanned marvels ranging from the Nat 750 to the formidable MQ-9 Reaper venture into critical spaces. and carry out a variety of missions ranging from surveillance to offensive strikes. Aside from surveillance and assault, UAVs like the MQ-25 can also perform aerial refueling. As technology advances at breakneck speed, the future applications of these self-flying giants remain a thrilling mystery. promising even more transformative roles in combat zones.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.